So everyone has an idea of who should be Minister of Youth, and that's perhaps why presidential aides are saying, leave the decision to Mr. President <laughs> to decide who oversees that ministry, and we're probably going to be hearing about that in the coming days. But in Lagos here, the Speaker of the House of Assembly, Mudashiro Obasa, says the decision to disqualify 17 commissioner nominees was born out of their constitutional responsibility. His reaction is coming following widespread criticism against the state lawmakers last week. We are placing politics ahead of technocrats. What technocrats? What do you mean about technocrats? Who is not technocrats in this allo chamber? Before them, we have many people. They talk about Dr. Akin Abayo, a gentleman, which are, or, you know, who happens to be a colleague also in serving the people. But before him, we have Lake Equator, we have Dr. Idris, we have many of them. Before COVID, which happened to be an isolated case, we have Ebola, which was also taken care of under fashion. It's not about qualification, it's not about your experience, it's not about exposure. We are the representative of the people. The mouthpiece, the ears, and the sights of the people. So we know what we look for. We talk about Aramide, the commissioner for what? Before him, we did Ikoyi, uh, Victoria Island Link Bridge, under fashion, uh, when uh, doctor, the current deputy governor, AMSA, was the, the commissioner for what? The House, as a body, restrained itself from exposing what we discover during the screening exercise. So uh, we are not going to be forced to spill. It was um, William Butler Yeats who said, things fall apart, the center cannot hold. I remember speaking with an aide to the governor a few days ago who also had a completely different story to tell and I'll be sharing that clip with you in the course of this program. But I'm joined now by a legal practitioner and politician. She's arguably the longest seven female lawmaker in Lagos, former Deputy Speaker, Lagos State House of Assembly, Honorable Fumi Tedrosho. Good evening and thank you for joining us on the program. Good evening. Thank you for having me. All right, let's begin from the national front. There are about 10 new or modified ministries. We saw a few reshuffling and change of ministry happening even a day to swear in it. What do you make of the current structure with 45 substantive ministers? Well, I think Nigeria is a very big place. And um, we need um, more people to handle the affairs of Nigeria. We appreciate the fact that um, His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu is an experienced politician. He, he was a technocrat. He worked in Mobile. He's somebody that has seen both the private sector, the public sector. And I believe that he knows what he's doing. Um, if we don't have enough people in these different places, Ashwajo cannot be in every place at the same time. The ministers are the ones that will actually be the face of the president in the different ministries. And like I said, Nigeria is a big place. The population of Nigeria is very big. And I, I want to agree with the, with the list of the, the ministerial list and the different ministries, because we need those things to function properly. You talked about transportation, where it's been divided. I think when you have more people in a particular unit, you get more done. So I, I am I'm in total support. And we're not even done. There is still the Minister of Youth, and there's an active lobbying within your party for that role. Abubakar Momo, who was initially appointed, is 60 years old, and you know, party stakeholders are asking for a younger representative. What kind of a person is most suitable for this role? Well, I always say that it's the result that matters. You know, you can have a youth that is very vibrant, that can hold that position well. And you can have somebody that is not a youth that is also very vibrant and will hold the position well. I believe that it is the result that we want that we should focus on and not the messenger. But for inclusion's because sake, for, for inclusion's least, sake, how will it look to have a 70-year-old serving as there, minister? There are, there, are a lot, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of youths in the um, cabinet of 
President Tinumbu. We have um, someone like Beta Edu, who's 36 years old or thereabouts. I think we should commend him for somebody that dares to appoint young people to help to move Nigeria forward. And I feel that if the youths are clamoring for a youth to, to steer that particular ministry, it's not out of place, but you cannot force that on the president. You know, we, we all have our desires. Our desires don't make it always right. And if you pick a particular person for the president, if the person does not perform, are you the one they're going to talk about? No, they're going to say it's the government of this president that did this or did that. So I feel that some of these things, we should leave it to the president to make those decisions. While we commend the youths for wanting to, to for daring to, to want to be in that space, because it takes a big person to want to be a minister. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with them clamoring, but we still have to leave it for the president to decide. We probably have about nine female ministers. I'm, I'm not sure of the figure right now. Is that something you're comfortable with? Pardon me? I said we probably have about nine female ministers. Are you comfortable with the you know, gender distribution on this cabinet? Well, you see, like for us women, we, are, we, are, we, are, we have started to ask for those things and we're just beginning. You know, we're Oliver Twist. We always want more because we believe that what a woman cannot do can never be done. Mm -hmm. So we continue to ask for more women, but we are not going to impose women on the government. We ask for it because we know that there are a lot of women's, women that are capable of holding positions of authority. They are tested and trusted. And we feel that we should continue to ask for more for the women. When we do, um, during elections, you see a lot of women at the forefront. You see a lot of women. You know, some of us went to Joss, we went to Ilori, we went to Ogo State, we went to um, or your state and so on and so forth. And you know, when you see women go from one place to another, it's because they believe in that person that is vying for that position. That means we believe in, 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 in President Bola Tinubu. Mm. Therefore, we are willing to work with him. And there's nothing wrong with women, you know, we're, 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 we're not satisfied with it, but it's a good start. And we must commend him. You know, the Yorubas, we say, when you thank somebody for something, they'll give you more. And we believe that there, there are better things yet to come for, for other women to be able to show how they can um, contribute their own quota to the development of Nigeria. I remember that in 2015, you aspired yourself to become the first female speaker at the Lagos State House yes. of Assembly. Are you surprised that some yes. eight years after that, that we don't have a female speaker yet? It would be nice to have a female speaker in Lagos State. Of, of course, as a woman, I must support that. You know, but while not criticizing the men for doing the right thing. You know, the, 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 um, the speaker there now, he, he, this is his third term as speaker, and he's doing a fantastic job. You know, so we're not going to, to say, oh, no, he's not doing well because we want to be there. But yes, we would, we would, I would like a woman to become speaker one day, definitely. And I'm sure it will happen very soon. Talking about the speaker doing a fantastic job, um, you had my intro about what's happening between the Lagos State House of Assembly and the governor, as regards um, his commissioner nominees list, um, it's unprecedented. The first time about 17 of them will be rejected by lawmakers. But I spoke with Boyega Akosile. I want you to hear what is said about the governor's position on this crisis. Okay. Well, pro okay. I must tell you, this is the first time that the governor of Lagos State, any governor of Lagos State, will be thrown uh, out the nomination to uh, to the, the the political class. Every local government in Lagos State, you know, was given an opportunity to nominate people into into the cabinet. This is the first time that this will be done, and they nominated three people. 
And out of the three people, um, I mean, you know, we'll have two people, I mean, two most, uh, in a way, one female. In fact, what the governor and the deputy governor said is that we must have female in, 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 in the nomination. Whether you nominate you know, two female or one, one, one male or two male, one female, the most important thing is that let us have two, let us have three people, and there must be inclusion of female uh, in the nomination. This is the first time. It has never happened in the history of um, of the state. And also, it ensures, the, the executive will ensure that they did a thorough, thorough job before you know, that bringing up the list of 39 people. So, Honorable Teddy Osho, he's saying that this is the first time the governor would consult local governments to get a representation for commissioner, and they also insisted that they include a female in whatever nomination they are bringing forth. You, you have spent 16 years as a lawmaker in this state assembly. How does it work between the lawmakers and the executive? Are you surprised this is happening? Well, um, we have to appreciate the fact that um, the legislators have a constitutional duty which they have performed. Um, we, we keep moving away from the fact that they have confirmed 22 and they did not confirm 17. Now we're on that 17 that were not confirmed. And I believe that, first of all, when the House does not disclose reasons for non-confirmation. I believe they have left room for dialogue between the House and the executives, which is a very good thing. That's why I said that the, the speaker is doing very well because he could have easily said to the members, okay, let's go ahead and um, let the whole world know why we have done this or why we haven't done that. And I feel that with democracy, there must always be room for dialogue. And um, the House would have seen something. If the House confirmed certain people without even knowing too much about them, but just going through their CVs and then did not confirm certain people for that same reason, there's something they're saying. You know, I, I, I see people go on and on that, um, oh, they cleared um, somebody last tenor but didn't clear him or her this tenor if they could clear that person and didn't know anything about that person's um, capability but from what they have seen in the profile of that person then they have done a good job if they still go ahead now after seeing that performance decide that there's a reason not to confirm that person so you heard the speaker earlier on saying that the lawmakers have decided to keep to their chest the reason for this decision. And that, that has given so much room to different stories. There are various versions of what's happening between, think, though, between, between the lawmakers think. and the executives. For instance, if you are going to reject a commissioner nominee, you know, shouldn't you mm -hmm. also share with the public what makes a commissioner who perhaps, you know, there's the perception that he did well in the first term, what makes the person not qualified for a second term? Shouldn't that be something of public I, I, knowledge? I think he also said in his statement, because I've been paying attention to this thing, because I, I, I feel that as a former member of the House, it should be of importance to me. He also said, if you want to know why they re, re, refuse to confirm those persons, you can come to the House of Assembly to find out. The House has a right not to disclose if they believe that the disclosure is not going to be um, something that can be curtailed at the end of the day. In the and same breath, in the same breath, me, he also mentioned... Me, I, feel, I feel it is a reasonable House. Okay. A reasonable House mm. that keeps that to their chest. You know, there are many reasons why people are not confirmed. Many. From the smallest to the biggest. From the most worrisome to the least worrisome. So, Honorable, what I was going to say was that, because I also paid attention to what he said, he said anybody can approach the house, but in the same breath he said that they can choose, or rather they have chosen not to reveal, you know, what they have discovered. 
as to why they rejected these individuals. But he also did mention that there are politicians who are technocrats. So the perception is that these people were rejected because politicians have a better idea of who should occupy this position. No, I don't, you see, I don't want to say that that's what he said. He made it clear. And I, I want to say that he, he made a very, very um, um, important statement that there are many politicians who can hold those positions. There's nothing wrong with what he said. We have a lot of politicians that have PhDs. We have a lot of lawyers, doctors, uh, engineers, um, surveyors, um, and so on and so forth. Are we saying that because they are politicians, they're not technocrats? They're professional politicians. You know, I want us to move away from a lot of speculation and let us face reality. The governor is a hardworking man. The speaker is a hardworking man. The governor, like you said, his um, spokesperson or somebody that spoke on his behalf said, they have um, spoken to the different local governments who tendered certain um, lists to, to, to the executives. Some of the, the um, queries of the House from what I'm saying is that maybe they, they need to be more geographical spread. Maybe there are some things that are not um, palatable that they have found and they don't want to disclose. Maybe they, are, they, are, they, they feel that there must be a roundtable discussion where they can All right. um, resolve this matter. Mm. And I feel that the more we trash this thing, to me, it gets worse. The speaker and the, the governor are brothers. They've worked together for many years. At least I know that. Because I started in the House of Assembly in 2003 with the speaker. We started the House of Assembly the same day. And I know that um, our, our paths have crossed with the governor when he was also working in the, in the government of the state. And I don't think that there has ever really been any issue between the legislature and the executive. Let if me they, just jump in they, quickly, Honorable, and, because both yes. individuals, if we narrow this conversation to the governor and the speaker, they are holding public trust were voted into yes. that office by the people. Nothing should be happening about why a commissioner wasn't uh, confirmed that shouldn't be made public, you know, to those who voted well, them we, in. Don't you agree? We have put our trust in these persons, and I think we should give them time to resolve this issue. All we, right. By voting for we put our trust in them. We said, Mr. Governor, go and represent us as governor and fight our cause. Mr. Speaker, you are speaker there. You have been voted in by your constituents. Go and represent them. And as speaker, represent us as a legal state um, um, uh, people. And I think that we should give them some time to resolve. I feel the more we, you know, insinuate all sorts of things, the more difficult it is for resolution. If right. we really look at things solution, we should let, we shouldn't interpret a lot of things that we shouldn't interpret. We forget that they have confirmed 22 people. These 22 people, they are not, um, they don't have two heads. There are still mm -hmm. people that were on the list from the governor. And I All feel right. that the governor understands how the House of Assembly works. The House of Assembly understands how the executives work. And I believe that with, with time, it will be resolved. Very little All time, right. it will be resolved. Yeah. I get you, Honorable. You, you know, perhaps if they give us more details, too, it, it will give no room for speculations and all of that. But let's talk about you for a bit. Some say they haven't seen you in, in the political sphere, but we understand that you have a PhD in view in law. Congratulations about that. So let's talk about the judiciary for a bit. The president met with yeah. the NBA over the weekend. Uh, you know, he's That's talking right. about the need to, you know, give appropriate remuneration to judicial officers and legal practitioners uh, that perhaps that worked in Lagos and it's also going to work on the national level. Do you agree that better pay will result in better justice system? I think it helps, you know, if, you are, if your, your salary is enough for you, you don't have to look elsewhere. Um, I believe that the judiciary, the judges, the magistrates, they've been doing a tremendous job. And I feel... The, the president, he understands that there are three arms of government, legislative, executive, and judiciary. 
and the each arm of government has to be properly taken care of so that they can do their job. You don't want any arm of government going cap in hand to the other um, arm of government. That's right. And that is where you, you, you need to have that um, strict demarcation. Let the judiciary do their work, you know, have their money, do their own thing. Let the um, legislators have their own money, do their own thing, and the executives. Right. And I think that we'll have a better Nigeria. So I commend the president. Mm. You know, it, 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 I'm sure that um, the, the, the judges and, and magistrates are very happy to hear that. Honorable, we have to go now. So I, I just wanted to respond in 30 seconds. There's also the issue of disobedience of court order by the executive. As a lawyer who is also a politician, how do you feel when your colleagues in the executive flagrantly disobey court order? Well, um, uh, with this new government, I, I want to say that that won't happen. I feel that this new government appreciates the fact that the judiciary is a separate arm of government, like I said. It is not something that we should tolerate no matter what. It is not something we should condone. And I feel that with President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, it will be a thing of the past. I think people will be very careful because the president, will be, you know, he's making a lot of hard decisions because he wants things to happen very quickly. And I feel that with what, all what is going on right now, everybody will behave themselves. The, the, the judiciary will do their work and the executives will not go against the decision of the judiciary. Hopefully the drama we saw with the suspended CBN governor and of course um, that of the suspended EFCC chairman will be corrected now that we have you know, a substantive attorney general of the Federation. Fubi Tedio Show, politician, legal practitioner, uh, uh, perhaps a longest seven female lawmaker in Lagos. She was deputy chief whip, deputy speaker and chairman of the Lagos State House of Assembly Committee on Finance. Honorable, thank you for talking to us on the program. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. You too. That's our show today. You can watch a uh, repeat by midnight and at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I am Nifemi Ugunto. I'm back at 6 p.m. tomorrow with another exciting edition. Stay with us. <laughs>